Hello, I'm Mark French and I'm a professor in the School of Engineering Technology at Purdue University. This is ENGT 509, Applied Computational Methods. Now that seems like kind of a generic title and maybe you're not sure what it is, so perhaps we can start there. Many graduate programs, especially technical ones, start with some sort of math review course. And that's because sometimes people get, you know, who are starting might not have learned as much math in undergraduate school as they might have, or maybe that was a long time ago and they don't quite remember it. So classes like this are designed to make sure you have the understanding and the tools you need to succeed at what comes next. So we're going to go through a range of topics that you will need and also along the way we're going to learn MATLAB so that you have a way of crunching numbers easily. MATLAB is a very uh, popular calculation language, basically. There's no universal uh, technical calculation language in the world. MATLAB's as good as any. It's very well developed, it's very powerful, and it's very widely used. So if you only learn one way to crunch numbers in a computer, this is probably a pretty good choice. Now, before we get too much farther, we've got to answer some really big questions, and this is the biggest one. Now, that seems like kind of a dumb question to ask. I mean, what's mathematics? Well, we do mathematics all the time. We must know what it is. Well, yes, but maybe not enough. In order for us to progress and in order for you to really absorb what's going on here, we're going to need some context. So I want to start there. So what is mathematics? Well, it depends on who you ask. Mathematicians and engineers are very different people, right? Mathematicians, it's easy to think that well, mathematicians calculate. Mathematicians mostly don't calculate. Mathematicians mostly prove. And that's probably as it should be. Mathematicians have the job of discovering new math, mostly, at least in universities. Engineers, physicists, everybody else, we have the job of applying that mathematics to practical problems. Those are two very different things. So mathematicians and engineers tend to have very different personalities. And if you've ever had a problem in a math class that you just weren't getting it, maybe the professor just wasn't speaking in a, in a, in a uh, coming from a place that you understood, I'm gonna guess that's probably the problem. Mathematicians tend to be puzzle solvers. They tend to be logicians, and it's good. It's right that it's like this. This is as it should be. They don't tend to be process people. Engineers, we're process people. Those are, again, two very different personalities. So if a puzzle solver tries to explain mathematics to a process person, it doesn't always work. Now, conversely, it's uh, engineers are famously uh, averse to trying to learn proofs and the underlying ideas that make math what it is. So this discussion definitely goes both ways. Now, why should you listen to anything I'm telling you? Um, I'm an engineer. Uh, I was trained as an aerospace engineer. Out of undergraduate school, I uh, started at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base as a civilian engineer for the U.S. Air Force. I was there for about 10 years doing research in, in various fields, and along the way went to graduate school and finished up a PhD in aerospace engineering. After uh, about 10 years at Wright Pat, I went to Detroit for nine years, where I was a lab manager and a uh, development engineer, senior engineer, and uh, working in noise and vibration, so very mathematical fields. In 2004, I came to Purdue, and I've been here since. So I've got enough math to get the job done here. So let's get back to this. What is mathematics? Again, depends on who you ask. Well, let's go at it from a mathematician's point of view, because I think that's important here. There is a thing, or a group of, of uh, statements, called the Zermelo-Frankel axioms. And this, this is pretty abstract here, but this is important. I hope I spelling everybody's name right. It's F-R, I think it's A-E-N-K-E-L. The Zermelo-Frankel axioms, or sometimes they, call, they get called the ZF axioms. And there's a, an, an additional one called the axiom of choice. 
I think there's 12 of these. Check me on them, but I think it's 12. So with uh, ZF axioms plus the axiom of choice, sometimes called the ZFC axioms, are the foundation of mathematics. All right? Those 12 or 13 statements, about a dozen, are in, uh, couched in, uh, I believe it's set theory. All the mathematics we're likely to ever do, and it's right enough to say that the mathematics that engineers and physicists all use, live inside those. That's it. Now, this did not come about quickly. It's relatively recent. And this was an intellectual triumph, all right, to put mathematics on a firm theoretical basis like this, this fundamental. So when you talk to a mathematician about what they do, it's close enough to say that what they're doing is they are unpacking the ZF axioms and finding out what the logical implications of those are. It's not how it's always been, but that's pretty much how it is now. So mathematicians are, log are basically logicians. Mathematics is a very rigorously proven, self-consistent set of logic that emerges from this. What? That's not what I do. What's this? Well, this is the big question in mathematics. And to my mind, there is only one big question in mathematics. Why is this useful? Why does this do anything we care about? Well, th th there's only one answer as far as I can tell. The world around us, the universe around us, works according to physical laws and those physical laws are expressed only in the language of mathematics. So this just happens to explain what's going on in the world around us. Someone with the, with the proper training can make calculations, maybe even on a sheet of paper, and tell us what's going on inside a star a million light years away. Okay, that's pretty powerful. If you want to think of it another way, perhaps try this. Pause for a second here, and let's try to think of any physical law, anyone, that is not written in terms of mathematics. I've tried for a long time. I've been doing this talk for a long time, and I can't think of one. If there is one, it escapes me. I, I'm sorry, I just don't know. But which ones are? Oh, I don't know. Let's start with all of Newton's law, so all of rigid body dynamics. Aerodynamics, hydrodynamics, acoustics, electromagnetism, optics, which is just electromagnetism. Oh, let's see, all of astrophysics. Do you get any idea here? Quantum mechanics. Everything is, is written in terms of mathematics, and the world works according to mathematical laws. Now, why? Nobody has any idea. We'll probably never know why. I'm not even sure the question makes sense. There is no why, there's only how. We know how, we're finding more about the how all the time, but we have no idea why, it just does. What if it didn't? That means Harry Potter would be real. You could wave around a little wooden stick and say some words that change the sound field around your head in, for a very short time, and all of a sudden you could arbitrarily violate physical law. Whoa, okay, that makes a great movie and it makes a great book. That is not a world we wanna live in, okay? Fortunately, we don't. So this is what mathematics is. Now, this is fine, um, and I do want to talk very briefly about axioms and proofs. This is very much not an axioms and proof course. This is very much applied, and I'm gonna couch all the things I want you to learn in very, very practical, uh, useful ways, okay? But before we go there, let's just pause, let's just dip our toes in the water for maybe 15, 20 minutes and see what this is. So what's an axiom, okay? Mathematicians, you know, these folk, folks like these, start out with axioms and from those axioms they construct formal proofs. So all the mathematics we've learned, that isn't empirical. I mean, it started out empirical, but it didn't wind up there. It is on a very, very rigorous foundation of mathematical proof. So what mathematicians do, basically, is they discover new mathematics and they prove it to be correct so folks like us can go do something with it. Once again, this is probably as it should be. It works very, very well. So, all right, I keep talking about axioms. What's an axiom? Well, an axiom is a statement that is so obviously true, 
it doesn't need to be proven. All right, so if you have a collection of axioms like that, you can use it to build a structure knowing that structure, that logical structure, is on a very firm foundation. So let me give you an example of an axiom. Now I'm very much not a mathematician. I'm not an axiom proofs kind of guy. But I know enough to appreciate it and be able to uh, understand it. So let's try here. I'm going to write this out. OK, that's three lines. One, two, three. And they're at an angle. And the two angles are alpha and beta. So there is an axiom that states that if alpha and beta are the same, those, these, these two lines right here are parallel. That's it. Well, that's obviously true. You don't have to prove that. So this, was, this statement could be considered an axiom. So if you hear an, a scientist or a mathematician say that some idea is axiomatic, it means it's very foundational. It doesn't even need to be proven. It's so obviously true. So with that, uh, the next step is you can take axioms and you can use them as the foundation for proofs. Well, what's a proof? Well, a proof is a logical set of arguments that establishes some statement to be true. And they get pretty dense and they get very, very long. But some of them are quite short and easy to understand. So let's pause here for a second and let's do a quick proof. Now I'm going to do this physically so it'll be easy to understand. I'm going to go over on my little table over there and we're going to do this. So ready? Let's go do this.